this is an exciting one. <laughs> it's also a really deep one. We can really we can go deep, deep, deep down into IBM System Authority. But since this is a primer, I'm just going to absolutely skim over the top, explain some of the very basic principles of uh, the System Authority in IBM I and what makes, well, what made the AS400 such a famous and capable machine, its built-in system security, and how that was enhanced over the years in later models with the i-series. It added all kinds of internet security with the system i, it honed that even further. And now with the uh, current iteration of the machine, IBM i operating system running on power, the system authority uh, setup configuration security is second to none. So <laughs> let's have a look at system authority, shall we? So where does all IBM I authority start? Just like on most platforms, it starts with the users. Um, your user account defines what you can do, what you can't do, and what's accessible for you. The Here is the uh, green screen version, the 5250 emulator version of looking at a user profile. Here I'm creating a user profile called some bloke. The password is my password. Again, things like um, passwords can be hundreds of characters long, uppercase, lowercase. You can set rules about patterns of usage detection that have to be used in passwords. Uh, you can enable and disable profiles. You can give them user classes. Uh, you can limit capabilities for users, which means that they're only limited taking menu options. They can't enter commands onto the command line unless you specifically grant them access to those commands. The user profile setup is a complex beast with over 50 different settings. Uh, well over 50 different settings and growing with every release. So let's not spend too much time looking at it. Let's just look at five of the most important in theory, uh, system authority settings. So if you're signed onto the machine, it's all going to start with the command authority menu. So you could type in go command AUT, CMD AUT. That takes you to this menu that you see on the screen. From here is every single command that you have to do with system authority on the machine. When you're looking at a more detailed view of object authorities, you can see that when I'm displaying the object authority, well in this case I'm editing object authority, objects can be secured using various techniques. They all start with a user and we can grant them rights. Operational authority lets you use something. Management authority lets you move and rename something. Existence authority lets you delete them. Attribute authority lets you change certain attributes of the objects including things like triggers. Triggers are a special process um, where you could say on a file, when someone writes a new order to the order header file, I want you to call this program. And this program will, I don't know, send a web service notification to someone to say that their order's been received or something like that. We also have the R column, which is the reference authority, lets you specify referential constraints. I'm not going to go into any of these in any detail. I'm just skimming over it so you understand this is the level of the system authority. Once you've done that object level, we can also assign authority to the data within those specific objects. So the data columns here on green screen, the data rights are the ability to read data, add data, update data, delete data, or execute data data that's a weird one isn't it it lets you the right if we were granting this on a program we could give someone the right to run it or search for it in a given directory you'll notice on the left hand side there's some special values there saying public and group so this authority setting we're looking at here explicitly is saying there is a user profile called sysadmin he has asterisk all rights so that person is god and they can do anything with this litten n object. Public people out there have got use rights, so they can just read and execute things within this library. So by default, if you haven't got any explicit authority settings, you can read things in this library. Group says, there's a user profile called QPugma. Anyone, any users that are within that group have the ability to change data within this object. But nobody, nobody 
except sysadmin can delete things, rename things uh, within the library. So we have a separate, even more uh, easy to understand way of looking at obje of object authorities called an authorization list. And quite often what you would do is rather than granting, this is my preferred technique, rather than granting individual rights to individual objects, you set up an authorization list. You create this special object called an authorization list. Here's me creating one called Nick's demo, and I'm setting rights on it. I'm saying public can change data here. Litten, that's me. I've got full admin rights on this object. Dex, that's one of my colleagues at work. His user can read, add, update, but not delete data on these objects. And QPogamer, any one of my fellow programmers that are in the QPogamer group can read the file only. And then all I'm going to do is go and grant that authority setting to those objects. It's really simple stuff. I mentioned that users are within a group. Uh, that's right, you can create groups of profiles that are within groups. This, this principle is also the same in other platforms like Windows. Users can be within the groups and inherit the rights of that group. Groups can be within further groups and inherit the rights of that group. Within group profiles, you can have a setting of user profile as the owner or group profile. And that means that when you're running a process and reading data, you're either reading it as yourself or you're reading it as that group. Group authorities let us act as groups or act as more granular authority settings. All kinds of fun and games within system authority. It's a really deep subject. So all you need to remember is that it's very granular, very locked down. I haven't touched on things like the firewall because this is a primer. Uh, know that we do have an IBM I firewall out there. Um, we're looking at just the object authorities. You can lock down your system as tight as you like or you can leave it as wide as you like. Well, and that brings us to the end. I think I'm going to end here. Uh, I've just touched on the authority saying these are the things you can do. It's such a complex topic. I'm trying to keep this light and breezy. I don't want to go into it, but I could always create a course on system authorities if you really want to go into that. So if you've got questions or you've got feedback or you'd like to ask me to do a presentation on a certain topic, please go to the support desk. That's at, oh, my uh, package from Post Print Shop is in transit. <laughs> That's a new uh, painting for the living room. So uh, <laughs> answers at the support desk. Go to the website, nicklitton.com forward slash support. Now, what next? I put this screen up here because I couldn't think what to do next. I've put together an introduction to CL, Control Language Program. I've also put together an introduction to RPG programming. Um, I'm working on web service concepts right now. Once I publish this primer, I'm going to finish my web service concepts course. So as a, this and a growing list of courses found at nicklitton.com forward slash courses. And if you would like anything in particular or there's an area that confuses you, please leave a ticket on the slash support desk. I would be delighted to record something to cover it. Um, that's about it. Thank you very much. My name is Nick Litton and I'm a dodgy bod <laughs> who taps away on IBMI systems. And I call myself an IBMI software developer. I used to use programmer. Apparently that went out of vogue being a programmer or an analyst programmer. That's two 1980s, my kids tell me. So now I'm a software developer. Anyway, oh God, I do blather on sometimes. Um, that's it. You can reach me on my work profile, which is nick.litton at projects.com, or you can reach me on my personal profile, nick at nicklitton.com. Use the work one if you hope for a response. If you want a response, a serious one, go and raise a ticket. I will definitely get back to you. Emails I check if and when and when I'm free. Uh, apart from that, I hope this course has given you uh, a good understanding of the IBMI system. And going back through these slides, all these wonderful things that we covered all the way. Oh, my mouse is clicky, clicky, clicky. Did we really cover all of these screens all in this presentation? Yes, we did. Everything from job logging and jobs and odd job and primers and what the machine does. So here we are, back to the beginning. From IBM System 3X to AS400 to iSeries to IBM I and beyond. I don't know what's next. Um, I will 
absolutely be enthralled if IBM's next iteration of machine is called an AS500 because that will really throw a spanner in the works. Come on, IBM, do it just for me. Um, right, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the presentation and uh, I'll see you on the flip side.